So you guys already know that I share so much about my life through LinkedIn, through podcasts, through LinkedIn Lives, but I'm gonna consolidate everything and put it together on this draw of my life. So let's start from the way beginning. So I was born in Korea and one of the first memories that I had growing up in Korea was I had a goat on a rope and for some reason my brother and I were there with my parents doing a picnic out somewhere in the meadows and this goat just starts running around in circles and I started to cry. That was honestly the only memory I had from Korea. But you fast forward a couple of years and my family actually moved to the US because my dad got a job. My dad actually was working for a company where they relocated him to the US so that they could start a US operation. And so my dad said, you know what? It's gonna be perfect because it's gonna be a chance for Jerry and my brother John to have a chance at what they read and dreamt about the American dream. So my family and I moved out to the US and keep in mind, this is, we were the only family out of our entire family tree to be in the US. So this was a huge culture shock for my family. There's a huge culture shock for me growing up. But more importantly, we had to really accustom ourselves to a place where none of us really knew the language or really knew how things worked. So I moved to Southern California to start. And I remember going into kindergarten and being surrounded by Asian Americans who had similar stories as I did. So it definitely made the transition a lot easier. But from there, it was a traditional immigrant family to live the America dream for me and my brother with my parents working hard to start a new chapter for us. So when we were a couple years into the US, my dad actually quit his job and figured, hey, well, if I'm gonna build out a business in the US, for the tire and wheel business, why am I doing that for someone else? Shouldn't I do it for myself? And so my dad was an entrepreneur, leveraged a lot of his connections in Korea and the people that he met there in the US to start his business. And I remember when I was really young, we took vacations to Korea. We always brought gifts to family and friends. Our family would come visit us in the US and things were really good. But it was in the early 2000s when actually the SARS disease hit China really bad. And my dad's company did a lot of manufacturing and distribution from China. And so when that hit, it completely destroyed my family's financial situation because my dad's business went under. And so what happened from there was it put my family under huge stress. And I remember as a kid waking up at 11.30 p.m. at night with my parents trying to figure out whether or not we as a family should stay in the U.S. and tough it through or go back to Korea. But it was through the resilience of my parents that really said, hey, you know what, we're going to do everything we can to figure it out and allow for Jerry and John, my brother, to live the American dream. So we had a large amount of debt and my parents prioritized us. It was the first time in my childhood when I began to realize that my parents were working their tails off. They were work, my dad worked from 7 a.m. early in the morning, would come back around 8 or 9 p.m. And I remember he would spend time on the computer to try to research what college looks like when I was in elementary school and my brother was in middle school. But despite not having the financial security that most of my friends and people around me had, like, don't get me wrong, I had an amazing childhood. I had great friends, I had a loving family, I had a great community, we had the best homemade food. I can't compare to anything else. And when I fast forward to high school, my brother got into UCLA, he was the family gem, he was a golden boy, and I thought to myself, you know what, I'm gonna do better. 
And so as I was going through high school, I was always pushed to study, focus on my goals on college. And my parents literally were playing roulette, went all in on red and bet that my brother and I would hopefully make it, right? And something that my close friends know that I, I think most people don't know is actually I was really, really passionate about gaming and actually wanted to be a professional gamer, but my parents wouldn't let me, of, of course. I remember wanting to be a streamer before Twitch.tv became a thing. I went down the path of college. I remember I applied to 17 colleges. It was no joke applying to 17 schools, writing all those essays. And as soon as college applications were about to close, I remember I was part of the Red Cross executive board where one of my friends told me that she applied to Babson College. And at the time, I had no idea what it is. It's a small business school in the Northeast. I grew up my pretty much my entire life in Southern California. And when she was telling me about it, the only thing that rung true to me and the only thing that I heard was business, business, and business. And I knew that growing up in a business household, an entrepreneurial household, that, that was the only thing that I wanted to do. So I applied to Pepsi on a whim. And I remember come college acceptance day, I got rejected from my dream school, UC Berkeley, UCLA, USC. I was crushed. And I remember I was deciding between a couple colleges, but the main decision criteria that I went with was purely based off of financial aid, which probably wasn't the best idea because I didn't do any research, not even a virtual campus tour, nothing. But little did I know that was honestly the best decision of my life. Enter college. I remember when I flew out to Babson, it was sometime in August of 2013 where I got in a taxi. I stayed in a hotel by myself for the first time in my life. I flew alone for the first time in my life. And I went to orientation day without my parents. And it was me and I set up my bed by myself. I said hi to my roommates, their roommates' parents. Everyone else was with their parents, but I felt I never felt so alone. But amidst that, the biggest, biggest thing that took me by surprise was a culture shock. Growing up in the town that I grew up in, in Southern California, I was always surrounded by Asian Americans, very few Caucasian, very few African American, Latinos. And so when I went to Babson, a third of the students are international. So we had people from, I believe, over 50 countries were represented. So you can imagine how much of a culture shock this truly was. Everyone was wearing button downs. I remember I was wearing my Dickies shorts, my Vans. And as I looked around in my classroom, the more I began to realize that everyone seemed to be so much further ahead than I was. They knew what the difference between revenue and profits were. They knew what an internship was. I didn't know anything. And I remember hearing for the first time that someone on my hall was going to intern at a company called McKinsey. And I thought to myself, well, I mean, that's great. I don't know what that company is, but little did I know that was one of the best consulting firms out there. It was at that moment when I began to realize that I had no network, no one that I could really rely on. And it was sort of a journey that I had to take on by myself. And so that's by and large why professional development was so important to me when I was in college because I felt so behind. And I told my parents that I would never ask money from them ever again. Rather, I would try to find ways to give back to them. So I remember my freshman year, I joined organizations like Delta Sigma Pi, the Babson Consulting Association, and a lot of other professional development organizations that helped me understand what does a resume mean? What is interview preparation? What is salary negotiating? What is networking? And that's really provided a foundation for me to go into my sophomore year to find my first internship during my second semester where I interned at a strategy consulting firm called Gray Associates. It was probably a team of about 12 or 15 people. We were doing analytics. We were creating client materials. 
but most importantly, gave me a flavor for what it means to be in consulting, but also gave me the confidence that, hey, I can actually do this intern game. I can actually do this recruiting game. Every semester after my sophomore summer, I interned at Dell EMC. That following semester during the fall, I interned at a private equity firm. That following during the summer of my junior year, I became the first intern at Google. And it was at that internship when I had another level of culture shock because I was surrounded by students who went to Harvard, MIT, Cornell, all the big name schools. And here I was sitting alone, the lone kid from Babson College. It was an amazing summer. I had amazing mentors. I worked on such important, impactful projects. And that following year, I came back as an analyst. Once I started working, I began to realize that Again, I felt like the underdog. I was the youngest one in my organization. I felt like a rookie. My manager at the time was just telling me, hey, yeah, just, just take it easy. Just go chill. Don't really focus too much on work. But here I was thinking, hell yeah, I'm going to just chill. I'm going to just go eat. I'm going to just have a good time. And after a month, I began to realize like, wow, I'm not doing anything. And so I remember trying to figure out well, what is everyone else doing? Well, I want to know who else is working with who, who's doing what. So I set up about 30 or 40 calls with people who we worked with, with people who were on my team. And I soon began to start getting smaller projects, but also just created a project on my own. And I remember it was this specific project that allowed me to find a huge, huge product gap at Google. And it was through this that I led one of the biggest projects with the pro biggest product loophole where it gave me the foundation to be promoted in my first performance review, which was absolutely crazy. And from there, I was promoted to a strategist. Six months after that, strategy and operations manager. A year after that, I became a senior strategy and operations manager. But during my time at Google, I remember going on LinkedIn, trying to post here and there, and that's where I actually met Jonathan Javier. If there's ever a day where you move up to the Bay, I would love to do one of these workshops that you're doing. And before you know it, a couple months later, he moved up to the Bay and we had our first workshop at UC Berkeley and that's where Wonsulting was born. You fast forward two years to now, and here we are. We have a strong team of about 11, but more importantly, the work that we're doing is really helping others make sure that they don't go through the similar struggles that I did when I was going through college, is that I hope consulting is everything that I didn't have in college, the support system, the advice, but more importantly, the confidence to know that you can do it, that you can figure it out if you put your mind to it. So today, where am I? I'm currently in LA, I'm closer to family, I'm currently doing consulting, I'm a manager of product strategy at a company called Lucid, and I could not be more excited for what's to come in the future. Stay tuned, thank you guys so much for listening. See you guys later.